Hello, home bosses. Today I'm going to show you how I price my KDP books. So if you want to find out how I do that, stick around and watch this video. I'm Nuria Corby from thehomeboss.com and welcome to this channel which is all about helping you to make money online. If that sounds interesting to you, click subscribe and like to get more videos like this. So I've seen a lot of people ask questions like, how do you price your books on KDP? Is it better to make them a bit more expensive or is it better to price them really cheaply? What kind of prices can we give our books to attract the most sales? Well, the way I do it is I have a look at my competition because every niche is different. And if you look at your competition, then you know what you're up against. So whatever niche you are choosing or whatever book you're making, have a look at how other people are pricing their book. The only thing that I always do the same is I tend to not go lower than $6.99. So all my books are at least $6.99. And the only reason for that is because if I go lower than that, the profit margin is a little bit too low for me. It's not really worth producing a book for any less than that. But that's a personal choice. That's, that's just my idea. And you can completely do it in a different way. You can have a different strategy. Some people, they like to keep their books as cheap as possible. And then once they have gained some traction and they've made a few sales, then they put the price up and the book will hopefully continue to make sales. That's another, a different strategy. So that is one strategy that people can can have. The other strategy is to price them at an appropriate price and not worry too much about getting the initial sales and just keep the price consistent. That is another strategy. So there's no right and no wrong, whatever works for you. And the only way you find out what works for you is by trying different things. So to me, because I have been in online businesses for quite a few years, there are different platforms that demand different price strategies. So for example, if you're on eBay, it's really a pricing war that you're entering. Everybody tries to get or tries to be the cheapest because eBay customers tend to be people who want bargains and who want the best prices. And on eBay, it would make sense to have really low prices or the lower, the better. On Amazon KDP, I find that it's slightly different. I don't think personally that people are looking for cheap books. I think people are looking for books that they want to buy, that they want to give as gifts or that they want to read. So it's slightly different. I don't think that offering the lowest price is essential. In, in this kind of business. Maybe you have a different view on that, but I'm telling you what I think, what I have found out over the time that I've been on KDP. And I find that sometimes it it's even better to have them at a higher price because psychologically people think that if something is very cheap, that it's not good quality. So when it comes to books, I find that you can price them at a, at a very reasonable price that it doesn't have to be very cheap and people will still buy them. One of my best sellers is actually one of my most expensive books. And there are other books in the same niche that are a lot cheaper and mine still sells. And I think that's because people think that, yes, if it's got a, um, a higher price, it's probably better quality. Maybe it's not, but I think psychologically that's what people tend to think. So don't be afraid on KDP to use whatever price strategy that works for you. And it doesn't mean that you have to be the cheapest. You, you're not competing on price in this um, particular business. So let's have a look how I would check my pricing. Let's go on to Amazon.com and let's have a look. So imagine that you are wanting to publish a funny notebook for teachers, for example. This is just to show you the process, how I 
would find out the right pricing for my books. So let's just type in funny notebooks for teachers and then I would look at what comes up and oh, also you can see there's a lot of books that are not independently published so we don't really compete with them but we just have a look at all of them for now just to see what the prices are so obviously you get very expensive ones when they are not independently published $26 I think that's a bit much for us but um, there we are $6.99 $10.99 because it's got a spiral $6.99 10.99, 7.99, 12.99. So let's narrow this down to paperbacks so that we know it's our type of book. Let's have a look here. Uh, paperback. Now we can see the pricing a little bit better. 6.99, 6.99, 7.99. So I think just very quickly you can already see that 6.99 seems to be the the price that most of them have priced it at. The other thing you can do is you can go on this self-publishing titans extension on Chrome and I love this because not only does it really help with research but it just has little touches here for example it gives you the average price in this niche and the average price is seven dollars and three cents so we can say I would say yes I would keep my notebooks to $6.99 in this case but as I said you can do whatever you like it's your book your strategy whatever you think is best for you I'm just telling you in this video what I do and and if you want to follow that example then absolutely fine but you can you can um, mix and match and you can do other prices as well so there's no right and wrong just try out something and find out if it works for you and if it doesn't work just change it maybe try and go lower maybe try and go higher I know it sounds a little bit surprising to say try a higher price but actually sometimes that works so you can try pricing your books higher let's see another niche just to to see if there's a difference let's have a look at something completely different and try a children's book let's say we've got a chil children's number book so you know children learning the numbers what kind of prices can we can we charge here's one for example animal numbers so they're quite expensive again let's try the paperback um, filtering so let's see paperback so what is the average price here it tells us that the average price is six dollars thirteen cents so you can price it around this price or maybe still go for $6.99 my strategy is that I don't go lower than $6.99 but that is completely up to you so the only thing I would say is you know don't make your prices too um, different to the average like if they if the average is $6.13 don't price it at $16.13 or something like that you know it's keep it more or less within the average price but you can go higher or lower so that's how I would do my pricing strategy let's just check one more and this time let's imagine we've made a planner for 2021 so let's just see what the average price is on our Chrome extension. So it says here 1141. So that's a good price, I would say. But then also we have to consider there are a lot of spiral bound uh, and hardback books. So they tend to be better quality. So let's have a look at the paperbacks. I'll click on paperback and let's see what kind of prices we can find now and the average price is nine dollars seventy so good price let's have a look what we can find so that's a coloring book that's not really what we're looking for um planner 2021 11.95 giraffe planner 11.95 here's one for 6.99 i i think my planners i think i priced them at around 7.99 depending on 
the quality on what's in the planner, how many pages. So if it's got more pages, I would obviously price it a little bit higher. But it's like I said, again, it's completely up to you. You can price it whichever way you think is best for your planner. Just compare your planner to some of the planners that you can find here and then decide on the best price for you. I tend to go for the strategy that I match my prices to what's already available out there. I don't go lower or I don't go higher. I just try and match the average. But it depends on the book. So if your book is really great and you put a lot of effort into it, then it deserves a little bit more money for it. So I hope this video has helped you pricing your books on KDP. Remember that it's your book. You can do whatever you like, but also remember that sometimes you have to try things out to see what result you're going to get. So just try it. And if you not, if you're not selling your book, just try to either decrease the price or even increase the price. That can work sometimes as well, funny enough. So hopefully you've liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe to receive more videos like this. And I'll see you again very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.